Well, hello again, everybody. It is certainly a hot day today on uh, Thursday as I record this. Hope you are coping okay in the heat. I hope you're all managing to find some time outside, whether you're still busy with work or in isolation. I uh, hope you're finding some time to get out into this lovely warm weather. Uh, as you probably know, we've been looking at acts over the last uh, few weeks, and we're going to continue on that journey a little bit, perhaps over the next few uh, weeks as well. And today I want to uh, continue in Acts 11. So if you remember the first part of Acts 11 is the um, the story uh, being retold of of Paul, of um, Peter and Cornelius. And um, there's this uh, conversation where Peter explains his actions with Cornelius. But I just want us to look at the next part of this chapter. So kind of from verse 19. Uh, and the, the gospel is continuing to move as we look at this uh, passage. And I want uh, to help you to see that with a magnificently drawn map. Now, uh, anybody who knows anything about me will know that art is far from something that I'm any good at. So I apologise for the uh, for the state of this diagram, but hopefully you find it helpful. So here at the bottom is Judea and Jerusalem. Uh, where it was all kind of focused in those first few chapters of Acts. And then, of course, we get into Samaria and the Samaritans start to um, believe and receive the Holy Spirit. It's at Caesarea, which is the next one up, um, where the, the this whole episode with Cornelius happens. Uh, by the way, the, the green are place names and the black are um, areas. And now here we see in this uh, next passage that we're into Phoenicia uh, Antioch and Cyprus so hopefully you can find those uh, Phoenicia I'll turn it that way around just to make sure you can read that um, Antioch is up there in Syria and uh, a beautifully drawn Cyprus you can see here and that's got the the sea around it in case you haven't worked that out um, yet and at the top there you can see Tarsus which is where um, Paul was based where he was originally from and it's where Barnabas goes to collect him during these few verses that we're looking at. So what is it that causes the gospel to continue to spread? There are three simple things here in this uh, passage that I just want us to quickly look at. The first one is consistent, faithful obedience. It's interesting reading these chapters in Acts. It feels like everything's moving very quickly uh, and moving forward for, from one day to the next. Uh, and actually, there's a there's a, a very different timeline than we might imagine. So in Acts two, the Holy Spirit arise, uh, arrives on the people, and it's it's then seven to ten years after that that this uh, the Acts ten the the conversation with Cornelius and the Gentiles receiving the Holy Spirit happens. So seven to ten years from the moment of the Holy Spirit arising. And then if you have a look at uh, verse 19, it says those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed, traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch, spreading the word among the Jews. And uh, and then in verse 22, news of this reached the church in Jerusalem. Uh, now, the time when Barnabas went up to Antioch is more than 10 years and could be up to 15 years from that moment when they were scattered uh, from the from Stephen's stoning. So we're talking about a long period of time. This isn't a few weeks later. This is 10 to 15 years down the line. So in some ways, this is not new movement. It's movement that's been ongoing for 10 or 15 years. And, and for all those years, they've been sharing about Jesus, telling the good news, as it says in verse 20. And also, um, when Barnabas uh, takes Paul to, to the apostles in chapter 9, to the point where, um, where, where Barnabas goes and gets Paul, again, we're looking at six or seven years. So since we've heard of Barnabas and Paul, uh, when, when Paul gets sent to Tarsus for his own safety, uh, it's kind of six or seven years before we hear from them again. And here uh, we find that Barnabas goes up to Antioch and then he goes and gets Paul from Tarsus to come and help him in that area. Paul's not left that, that area the whole time, but he's been preaching while he's there. So all those involved in this story have been faithfully serving God wherever they are for an extended time, not just rushing and, and a few weeks and moving on, 
they're settled and they're sharing and they're doing God's work in those places. And uh, just notice verse 23. Uh, Barnabas encourages them to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts and that's where they were at to remain true for 10 15 years they've remained true to the Lord and continue to do his work so consistent faithful obedience the second thing is about going to who they are called to and doing what they are gifted to do so you see in verse 19 some uh, spread the word only among the Jews. And then in verse 20, others began to speak to Greeks also, it, it says. Uh, in verse 20, it says, the believers shared the good news about Jesus. So, so they were going to who they were called to, to, some to the Jews, some beyond the Jews to the Greeks. And they were doing what they were called to do, sharing the good news of Jesus. Then Barnabas turns up in verse 23. What does he do? Well, what's his, uh, Barnabas means son of encouragement. His original name, uh, birth name was Joseph, but they called him Barnabas because he was such an encourager. So what does he do when he turns up in verse 23? He encourages them because that's what he's called to do. And then when it comes to the teaching, he goes and, and gets um, Saul as he was then, Paul as he became. For, for it goes round to Tarsus, finds Saul and brings him back and together uh, they do the teaching. So each one knows their role and commits to it. They go to who they're called to and they do what they're gifted to do. And finally, what's probably uh, for me the most important thing in all of this. What is it that causes the gospel to spread? It's the grace of God. It's God's hand, God's work. Just two uh, things to point out here. Verse 21, the Lord's hand was with them and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. His hand was with them in what they did. That's why the gospel continued to grow. And then just notice uh, also verse 23 uh, says, when Barnabas arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, not what the people had done, uh, but what the grace of God had done. He knows where all the credit for this goes and it goes to God. And so for us in these days, perhaps we weren't expecting lockdown to be as long as it has been. But we're called to consistent, faithful obedience, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. If, if it's another uh, a few months even before some of us can really get out and before we can get back together as a, as a gathered body, we can continue with consistent, faithful obedience. And in this time, we can get in touch with those that we're called to and do those things that we're gifted to do. Many have been uh, involved in, in some of our online services and videos, doing what they're gifted. Many others are praying. Uh, others are, are caring for one another as they call and keep in touch, as they send cards and gifts and other things to one another. We're doing what we're gifted to do in these days and, uh, and contacting those that God lays on our hearts. I'm so pleased uh, to be in a church where we're, we're doing this and that's what causes the gospel to spread. And finally, in the midst of all this, of course, the grace of God. We are utterly reliant on his grace. None of this uh, a breakthrough happens because of us. It's not because of what we've done or who we are. It's because of God. It's his grace. He chooses to use us. Uh, and he chooses to reward our faithful obedience with his presence and his power. But it's his choice. It's his grace. So let's continue to pray that his hand is with us in all that we do. And we've seen more of God's hand with us as we've met with people in the drive. There's been some significant conversations going on. And let's uh, continue to look out for what the grace of God is doing in these days, both in us and through us into the lives of others. I hope that's been helpful. It's great to share with you again and we will catch up again soon. Bye for now.